Hello and welcome to Bad Wolf Girl Sits and Knits episode 59. My name is Meg and I will be your host. You're joining me here in Rockville, Maryland where I live with my husband and um, yeah I am the dyer behind Bad Wolf Girl Studios. We are having a trunk show, um, not this weekend, not next weekend, but the weekend after. So February 24th from 10 to 6 at the Yarn Club in Virginia Beach. Um, all of the kind of links and everything I'm going to be putting into my Instagram photo that I put up at the end of every episode. Um, you'll be able to find the link to my Instagram in the drop down box below. Um, so hi, if you are a new viewer, welcome. If you are a returning, returning viewer, welcome back. I'm doing this all in one take. Um, I've been doing some live podcasts recently. I'm still trying to figure out how to get the proper clientele and kick all of the weirdos out. Um, so once I figure that out, I will do another live. But this is just going to be a do it in one take. We're gonna see how that goes. Um, but yes, so it's uh, Friday, Friday, February 9th. I cannot believe that we are already in February. I'm sorry that I missed last week. I just so much going on, but I did get to get something done because I took extra time and just chugged away at it. So I'll be talking about this in a second. Um, so yes, welcome, welcome, welcome. I did have a giveaway going on in the thread. Um, after this episode, I'm going to go over to Ravelry and lock it, and then I'm going to pull, <clears throat> excuse me, four winners. So I will be getting in touch with you soon, and possibly I'll just put up a video on here or and or on Instagram that will announce the winners for everyone. Today I am drinking coffee with frosted sugar cookie creamer. It's really good, but my voice obviously is not awake yet. <coughs> so to get rid of the frog, there we go. Better. <clears throat> So, first off, I want to thank everyone who has helped me prep for this trunk show by knitting samples. Um, there's just no way I could have gotten the amount of work done that each of you individually have done, and I am so grateful, so, so grateful. So I want to show you just a few things that will be available to see and squish at the um, trunk show. Got a couple in, I'm very excited. Got a knitting needle stuck to it. Ba, ba, ba. Seriously, like there's so much to squish. And I wrote down everyone's name so that I did not forget. And then I have this gorgeous package that I'm gonna be showing in parts because it's all too awesome to do in one take. One more. <laughs> okay, okay, here we go. So I am going to start with first arrived to last arrived. First arrived is the um, brioche bandana cowl by um, Lavanya Patricella. I have been saying Patronella. No one has corrected me. Guys, come on, you can tell me. So um, by Patricella, and uh, it's a really, really fun pattern. Um, it kind of goes off into this point so that you just can kind of squish it up into your coat and it just lays there. Um, I'm currently making one for Patrick for Valentine's Day, but this one, I just, I needed it desperately and it wasn't going to get done if it was just me. So um, the sun suddenly decided to come out. So I'm gonna hold it maybe over here so it's not too blown out. The uh, front rudder color for this is Night Bus and then the second color is Mermaid Cove, both of which will be available at the trunk show. So I'm very excited about that. Um, I'm kind of obsessed with mints right now. So that was very, very exciting. Um, we chatted about it and we made a little longer than it normally would be. So I think this is almost 10 inches here. Um, my hope was that, you know, like as you're, and I have some head mannequins I might bring, as you're wearing it, it gives you a little bit more here, a little bit more drape. So yes. Thank you. This um, this was Megan, which I was very excited about because we share names. <laughs> so that was kind of fun. I was like, well, she said um, to me that she had finished, you know, this giant brioche project. She feels quite proficient in brioche. She could definitely get it done before the trunk show. And man, was she not kidding? It was like a week, and she was like, I'm done. <laughs> like, 
awesome. <laughs> it was amazing. So thank you so much, Megan. I love how it came out and I'm so glad that you enjoyed working with the project. <clears throat> then came in, I'm okay, this combination I had been like dreaming about. So this is acid pop mixed with padfoot, which there's gonna be a lot of. I for, I had forgotten that I dyed like five skeins earlier and then I dyed 10 more skeins. So I think padfoot right now is the one I have the most of. I have like 15 skeins of padfoot. Um, anyway, so this is the All About That Brioche and it goes, um, starts with padfoot, all in here, so squishy. And then it went into the brioche and then it ended with acid pop. And this was two skeins of my DK weight. Um, so it was two skeins of padfoot, two skeins of acid pop. I'm not sure how much was left over. I don't think it was a ton. Um, I can also feel from her gauge that she's a tighter knitter than I am. So depending on the looseness and tightness of your knitting, uh, that might depend on like how much yarn you actually need. But anyway, obsessed, super obsessed, absolutely loving it. Oh my gosh. Like, that green, that green, it just like, it just screams at you. It's so exciting. Um, so thank you so much, Leslie, for this. This is amazing. Um, and she knitted up really quick for me. I mean, like with DK weight, we knew it was gonna work up pretty quick, but um, yeah, plenty of time for the trunk show. This one, I just, I, so excited, I'm so excited. I just love that green. I love that green, which I also have skeins of coming to the trunk show, and they will be in the shop. Um, available after. Uh, right now, this is one of the, yes, so then this one showed up. This is also Megan, spelled, we have three different ways of spelling Megan, all three knitters here, hysterical. Um, so yes, this is my tale as old as time and space color. And I had dyed it up to look like the Starry Night, and I thought that it would look gorgeous in a dotted rays. I feel that I was right, and it does. Um, and I had only gotten down to maybe, where's the last bead? Oh, maybe here. So I really had only gone um, a couple of rows. And I had started beading, but I talked about this previously. Um, I started beading it. You weren't seeing the beads. It wasn't going to be worth the work that I was putting in. So why do all that work, right? Um, so yes, I uh, didn't. I still, she weaved in the ends. I just have to cut them off. And I did block it. I just didn't cut them off yet. I will, I promise. Um, but I blocked it pretty aggressively. You know, like I really wanted it to soak out and, um, and stretch and the, the eye cord bind off allowed me to do a, a good amount. Um, but yeah, so she was playing a little bit of yarn chicken. I should have sent another, like, at least a 50 gram skein. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Megan, that was my fault. Um, but oh, it just, it did, it turned out so fun. It turned out so fun. So I am absolutely thrilled to have this for the trunk show. And um, this was only two skeins. So three skeins, you could get an even deeper one. And um, for the two skeins, I don't know if she alternated, but you really can't tell the difference whether you did or didn't. So, yeah. And now I have puppy hair on it because for some reason the dog hasn't been here for a month and I still have dog hair everywhere. We're trying our darndest to kind of like clean, but she wins. T still wins. I don't know. All right. And then, um, okay, last but not least, and I, this is going to be in two sections because I want to talk about some things. No, 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 two things left. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, um, so this one is the Inky Shawl um, by Suzanne Summers. And uh, she also wrote the pattern for the peachy shawl, which is this one back here. And then I also just bought another one of her patterns. I wanna make the sh sh shooey suey shrug. I am not, I'm just gonna link it. <laughs> I'm just gonna link it in the Instagram because I don't think I'm saying that right. It'll be in a hashtag, the 
something something shrug mm -hmm. I'm gonna do that so um, this is the inky it's actually about half the pattern but it's totally enough for the trunk show and it's kind of cute to have a little shawlette I feel like I don't have anything that's really like I love big shawls but this is definitely big enough to do exactly what I need which is this this is what I need when I have shawls so I kind of like I kind of love it that it's it's half but I would um, I would totally knit this pattern now that I'm more comfortable with brioche and I mean I wouldn't say I'm proficient by any means but um, yeah I now that I'm more comfortable with brioche I would I would definitely try and tackle this um, so this is my friend that does all of the owls and orchids pieces um, there's a little guy where are you come to me Oh, come on, you were right there a second ago. There it is. And so with the, whoa, that sun is coming right in. Bugger. <laughs> like, it was cloudy all morning. It was perfect. And then, bam, all of a sudden, sunshine. Look how beautiful. So I don't know if this little guy is a giveaway or if I'm supposed to keep it. I have to confirm, um, but he's absolutely beautiful and I'm really, really excited. Um, this is the same maker of the llama that somebody's going to win. I'm very excited. And um, what else are the bigger things that I showed off? Uh, the little like little narwhals, the little dragon. So very excited. Um, I'm not sure if this little guy is mine or yours, so I haven't used it yet. <laughs> Um, but anyway, this turned out so, so fun. This was Gringotts mixed with Mermish. And it's just, it's a really, really fun blend. And then you can see it on the side. And uh, yeah, so this little shawlette has been super fun. And um, I definitely think that it's a perfect little trunk show piece. It's just enough. It shows what the yarn does. It shows what the yarn feels like. It, it does its purpose, we're good. Um, her puppy had flipped the pattern and she had to rip back like eight inches. It was a sin. I was like, oh honey, don't worry about it. Just, just breathe, just breathe. Um, and then, oh my word, sorry, my eyelash. Um, so my friend Connie, I met her originally through some knit nights that, um, the uh, podcaster Coffee and Cables Tyranny used to do, um, who has since uh, stopped podcasting. So now I, um, there is the Yarns Around the World VKN, so you can still find everybody on there, but um, I hadn't seen Connie in forever. And so when I started doing test knitters and stuff, she reached out to me and she said, I've bought so many of your skeins, like, and I just have these leftovers, I've knit socks already. Do you want, me to knit some swatches and I'm like oh my gosh yes like thank you what do you want for it she went nothing I could have cried actually I think I did I think I teared up a little bit it was so sweet so of course I did send her something anyway because I, I just was so grateful um and this is a little pile of swatches that came back to me so we had um corpse bride which I was so excited I actually never got to see this knit up in like socks or anything I had done it in my fade or my west knit fade so I didn't know um and I think I need a tank like I think I need another top in this because oh my word that's stunning I just I mean like I'm tooting my own horn here but I really like how it knit up anyway that's that's my spiel and I'm sticking to it um and this one is sea dragon which I had originally dyed up because I wanted to knit one of the Lally Lala crochets. Um, this one is Vintage Darling, so it's one of my Christmas colors. Oh, I love it so much. And then this one is the Doctor's Ugly Christmas Sweater, which I thought knit up so cute in a swatch. It makes me wonder what it would do in a sweater. Like if I knit like a little kid sweater one day. Oh my God, that'd be so cute. Um, Silence in the Library which is just one of my one of my classics and the colors it's just I don't know it but they pulled so so interesting it was just really really fun um, and this one's birdie bots every flavor beans which um, 
has gotten a tiny revamp. There's a bit more like uh, light to dark variation in it. This was more of like I dipped the whole thing and it was all like a one note. Um, so there's a little bit more uh, variation in the new ones. Uh, this one is the pinup zombie, which will be at the trunk show. Uh, this one is the little Christmas tree, which is based off of our little Christmas tree. Um, so cute. And this one is, this is Halloween, which I don't know if I should have at the trunk show or not, because it's February. So if you want to leave a comment down below if you're going or if you think, you know, if you're going and you want to see it there. Um, and then this one is Pumpkin King. And this was one of the uh, kits. So Connie was amazing and like bought all the kits <laughs> that I had. Um, so she had gotten Corpse Ride, she had gotten Pumpkin King, and I had never knit this up and I had never gotten to see it knit up. Um, if someone did tag me in it, I must have missed it. So that was just so fun. I was like, what, what is, oh, I know what this is. <laughs> It took me a minute. I, oh, it was so exciting. So, look at that. Mm. And then I'm back to the beginning. That was the last one. So I had this like gorgeous pile of swatches and I'm going through the package, which there's more, and I'm gonna share that in a little bit. There's more, but these mittens. Oh my word. Look at these mittens. So these, are the Rhinebeck is Calling sock pattern by Kay. And she sells that pattern on Ravelry. But like these mittens, they are a perfect fit. Look at those tiny little stitches. And this is my Sea Dragon colorway. Oh my gosh. I'm I'm in I'm in absolute love. Like I I I, I was Speechless. I was speechless opening the pattern. I'm just going, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, Connie, oh my, oh my god, Connie, <laughs> like, <gasps> mm. <laughs> so it was just, and these little, like, I love these little gossips, like, they're just so cute. I can't, I can't, I'm so excited. So, um, these were like a complete surprise. She had knit this out of my, my Sea Dragon colorway as a test pattern for Kay, and she sent them to me. I'm so in love, I can't. I'm just so, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. So look at them, they're just like a perfect fit. Um, and the, the Rhinebeck is Calling sock pattern is just gorgeous on mittens, like, oh my word. <sighs> And actually, speaking of, I was going to talk about it later, but we have a giveaway from Kay. She um, sent me a, a pattern to give away. So I'm going to make that part of the, um, I think it was 3K, 3.5K, something. I'm going to make it part of that pattern. They look so, like, they look so tiny, like, but they fit me perfectly. They're absolutely perfect. Oh, my word. Oh, Connie, my word. I can't. I just, I'm in absolute love. And I don't have any mittens for the trunk show. So it's just kind of cool to have something like this. I'm debating going to Michael's and buying one of the hands so I can put them on. <laughs> Is that weird? <laughs> okay. All right, so let me see, let me see, let me see. Woo, rolling everywhere. Oh, I'm sitting on one. Oops, sorry, Newt's Commander. Okay, so here's the notes. Uh, so we're doing the giveaway. I got the samples, the trunk show. Okay, so that brings me to the next knit along that I want to do. I would like to do the class roster cal of Hogwarts. So you have to <clears throat> create something starting, um, if the whip is bigger than a sock, like bigger than a hat, bigger than a sock. So I'm thinking shawls, sweaters, etc., cetera. Um, Schwankets, shrugs, all that. Um, bigger than a sock, it can be enter, you can start it as a whip. Um, if it's like a sock or a hat or a cowl, then um, it should be like, like literally just cast on or you are casting on for the cow. Um, and this is going to be the Hogwarts class roster cow. 
I'm working on a hashtag. We'll figure it out so that I can see everybody's projects. And I'm going to be writing more about this in a post on Ravelry, which you can get the link down below. Um, so my idea is that in March, I have the Herbology kit coming out where, and I'm so excited. I'm not going to show it off on this one. I'm just going to talk a little bit about it and I'll show it off um, maybe on the next one or the one after. Yeah, on the next one. I'll probably do the next one. So uh, I'm dyeing up yarn for mandrakes. I have some like really bright green yarn uh, for minis that are going to go with it. Um, my wonderful, wonderful friend, Georgianne, who is stitching Plaza bags, um, is going to be making a bag and a notions pouch in that little cute triangle in um, mandrake fabric. And then there's going to be a charm that is brand new. So if you have already gotten uh, Lindsay's charms from Simply Serving, if you've already gotten her charm of a mandrake, this is not that mandrake. This is a brand new charm that has been made just for this. So excited. <laughs> and this is going to be released sometime in March. Once I get all of the packages together, I'm thinking middle March. I'm thinking middle March. Um, that'll give me time to kind of recoup after the trunk show and get everything resettled. And it'll give um, the makers who I know Georgian's doing Stitches West and she's up to her eyeballs and stuff right now. So um, that'll give her a chance to breathe and it'll give Lindsay a chance to get uh, the charms to me. I am going to be doing 16 kits, which is more than I've ever done. Um, they're, you know, you're always taking a chance that they don't sell out and then you have something sitting. But uh, there is a lot that's going into this kit, and personally, I would be fighting tooth and nail for it. Um, so I'm going to be uh, totaling everybody up, trying to figure out what all of the cost is that I'm putting out first, and then um, I'll create the price and let you know. Uh, so I'm not sure off the top of my head, um, but you would be getting a full skein of yarn, a, a 20 gram skein, skein of yarn, a charm, a full bag from Stitching Plaza, and a Notions pouch. It's a lot. So anyway, this got me thinking, like, how about in March, I start a knit along. Um, if you use any of my yarn from the shop, um, you can enter the finished object thread twice. Um, I've done that before. So you can use any yarn. It's like anything. Um, anything that you can relate to a class at Hogwarts. So um, you'll see in a bit, I have astronomy. Um, there's already potions master. Uh, you could probably use Hedwig for like owlry or magical creatures um you could use silence in the library which is a doctor who theme but you could use it for the library at hogwarts uh you could use dumbledore as like a headmaster type of thing you could use who else who else who else who else, who else? a class at hogwarts i could keep thinking <laughs> there, there i'm sure there's more i'm sure there's more so, um, or anything that you already have. So Nomadic Yarns is super famous for having tons of Harry Potter self-striping. So McGonagall would work, um, Dumbledore would work. You could use uh, like a Ravenclaw or, um, you know, any of the houses would work. I have those too. Uh, I have Neville, Professor Sprout and Quirrell just came out. So um, there's tons of ideas just kind of throwing them out there at you. So get your little noggins thinking. You want to find something that you can relate in like a sentence or two as to how it, how, you know, like how it's a Hogwarts class. And I'm lenient. I like, I'm not going to be like, no, for like pretty much anything. Just make it work. Make it work for you. I, I trust you. You can figure this out. I'm positive. I'm absolutely positive you've got this. So anyway, I hope you're excited about this. I'm thrilled about this. I cannot wait. I cannot wait for this. I made, um, I have the mandrakes coming, um, and then I have astronomy that's going to hit the, I'm just so excited. So excited. So anyway, um, so that is a cow that's going to be coming up. Um, yeah, March. March 2018. So I guess that brings us right into finished objects. And um, yeah, I guess we'll just deal with the elephant in the room right now. I'm wearing one. <laughs> 
Uh, so this is a pattern that was based off of, and let me see if I can move the camera down. So this was based off of the So Faded um, by Andrea Mowry, and I knit it out of my Luna colorway. Um, so Luna was a colorway that I had released when I first started dyeing. It didn't do well, um, so maybe four times, so not great. Um, and so it sat there, sat there, sat there, and it finally expired. Uh, so I didn't, I didn't, you know, Renew it, there it is, renew it, I didn't renew it. Um, and then, now come a year later, I kinda took another look at it. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. The frogs today, they're killing me. Am I in focus? Yes, I'm in focus, okay. I can't really see with my back screen. I'm just, I'm hoping, I'm hoping I'm in focus, anyway. So I took another look at it and I was like, you know what? Something didn't work about this. What could I add that would be more appealing? And it was the darker speckles that really did it for me. Um, so I used two almost full skeins of my uh, Luna colorway. And what I'm going to be, I'm rebranding it. So it's going to now be, you're just as sane as I am. And um, I did the So Faded pattern, and I started out with the 38-inch bust size, which is pretty much exactly what my bust size is. I did add a few extra stitches around here. I think they only called for like four, and I cast on 20 under the arm. Um, and But I did the uh, the neckline and everything is the just the So Faded pattern there. And then... Um, the bottom of it, I wonder, yeah, I can. So uh, if I put them next to each other, you might be able to tell the, the difference a little bit. Um, so this is a little less speckled, this is a little bit lighter, and this is what you get for hand-dyed yarn. Every skein is a little bit different, um, which is why they recommend doing uh, alternating skeins. So, ta-da. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I, I was absolutely in love with the first skein, so I just, plunged into it and then I did a quick fade in the middle where I alternated them for like five rows and then just went went into it but I can see I got down to <clears throat> excuse me I got down to my rib cage and then suddenly it just had I switched over to the new skein um I, I mean this is a learning experience but I think it also kind of helps now that I can you can see like how skeins differ they're not that much but it's enough that you might want to alternate or turn it into a fade like if you just you know go from this do the fade and go to the next one that's fine too anyway anyway this is the new you're just as sane as I am um and I'm just I'm, I'm loving it I'm absolutely loving it I did an I-cord bind off on the sleeves I used I used a US 1 on this sleeve and I used a US 3 on this sleeve you can see the difference this is why you do the same thing on both sides, Meg. And you do them both at the same time. I did the neck and the sleeve one night, and then I waited a week and did the other one. If I had done them all at the same time, they would all be the same, because I was doing it at the same time and the same parameter. I was not thinking. Not thinking clearly on that. So, anyway, anyway, here we go. Um, yeah, but it's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's been blocked. Uh, it does a pretty nice drape. Um, I had just done a regular bind off on the edge and I didn't like how it looked. It was just too messy. So uh, Monday night I sat and biked 14 miles while I did the I-cord bind off. <laughs> I actually didn't get the whole thing done. I biked for over an hour and I was like, you know what? I'm exhausted. I'm going to go shower and then finish it. And I did. Um, I only had maybe this much left, but I was like still not done after an hour of binding off. It was... But anyway, I burned 400 calories on the bike. I was very pleased with that. So I did a little I-cord edging down there as well. And um, I think that worked out fine. It's rolling a little now. And I wonder if it's because I had, I'm sitting. I don't know if that's it. Or if like I hadn't blocked it, like full wet blocked the bottom. I just sprayed it a little bit and let it hang on a hanger overnight. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Still in love with it absolutely in love with it. I need 10 more. I'm going to talk about that later. Um, it's so comfy. I started at the 38 inch bust and I have about, um, 50, 
two inch hips or something and I've got ease like I've got maybe six inches of ease around my hips so I made a really really bell shaped top basically um, I did and I have notes on my Ravelry I did um, increases I had the like 10 stitches marked off and on the outside of each of those 10 stitches I would increase knit 10 increase so it had a block and it kind of went out from that block under my arms. I don't know if I would do that again. I might make the block down to five stitches or three stitches. So I would do the increases that way. I don't know. I wasn't like uh, obsessed with the way that looked in the end. Like in my head, it was really cool. And then I did it and I was like, eh, that could have been smaller, but not a, not a deal breaker or anything like that. So um, yes, my Luna top. I'm so obsessed. I love it. And I will definitely be making more. I think my next one is going to be based off of the pavement sweater because I love that pattern. So I think I'm going to make the pavement sweater, but I'm going to do it with the shorter sleeves. Um, I don't think I would do sleeves any shorter than this though. I like having just a little bit, like, I don't know if I like seeing that much arm. I think it's weird. So, uh, yes. I love it. I'm obsessed. And I've taken pictures, so if you want to check my Instagram or my Ravelry, I, um, you can, you can just see I feel great in it. I feel fabulous. It's just awesome. Feeling it. So, um, yes. Uh, the other week I had, um, got a little obsessed and knit a ton of birds, which, um, you might be able to see, you definitely could see earlier. They're behind me. I have to show you my wall. I'm very excited. I actually took some push pins and hung things up. I love it because I didn't have to put any nails in the wall. They're just like pins. So it's not gonna be a big deal at all. Anyway, apartment life. I have knit three more birds. Um, this is my Newt Scamander colorway here. This is the Ravenclaw, and this one is the Doctor's Ugly Christmas Sweater. Boop. So excited. So I've got three more, three more little birds to add. Um, and that, no, it doesn't. I was going to say, that completes my bird collection for the houses. I still need Hufflepuff. Brr. I still need Hufflepuff. And then, okay, so I was thinking about it, how cute would it be if I used the leftovers from my nomadic yarn socks to make like McGonagall and like the other ones because that was the color. I'm a little too obsessed with these birds. Um, and I honestly can thank Amber <clears throat> of Maker's Haven completely for getting me into this pattern. She uh, encouraged me and kind of gave me some advice and, you know, made it not seem that scary. So I'm thrilled. I'm so thrilled. I love my little birds over here. I'm going to take another sip of coffee. It's going to be gone. That would be sad. Um, oh, and then, um, when you're a crafter, your family might be proud of you. So they show your stuff off to their friends and their friends who are not crafters don't understand the amount of work that goes into things and they're like, oh, I want one. So you dig through your acrylic yarn stash and you find some woolies in blue and I think this is the um, hometown USA in gray and uh, they want a brioche cowl, but you run out. They don't know that yet so it worked it totally worked it's big enough I tried it on my husband so it'll be fine um but there wasn't any other way to rig it so I just have to weave in the ends um but I've been working on this for four days straight just because I also work at school so this is like nights and the brioche it took me longer only because the bigger needles make my pinkies hurt <laughs> because I'm holding everything so tightly. But anyway, this is the brioche bandana cow. And it's gonna sit like this. And it's so squishy. Oh my gosh, it's so squishy. It's so squishy. It's so good. Um, 
but yeah, so this is for um, a friend's grandson, and I can't believe I got it done this quick. I had to put everything else aside, but it turned out. I just have to weave an end now and maybe give it a little spray. Um, but it's very warm, it's very squishy. The acrylic yarn did just what it needed to, which is, you know, fill the void in my life that I needed to give something to someone who might throw it in the washer by accident. I don't know, it's a boy. <laughs> you never know. But anyway, how how awesome did that turn out? So, so exciting. Um, yay, so exciting. So I can't believe I got that done. Uh, this is the Bulky Brioche Bandana Cow by Lavanya Patrice. Sella, yes, Sella, and um, it, it's missing the last like 10 stitches, but it actually kind of like it without the point. I don't know. I really like it. Pat really liked it. So um, from one Patrick to another, I'm hoping that that works out, uh, which brings me into Patrick's cowl. So uh, living in my stitching plus bag, this is my Ravenclaw bag for Patrick. Um, and I have been knitting in a non-super wash, so the gray cannot go in the washer at all, which Patrick already knew. Um, my Patrick already knew, but it is very soft. And then the other one is a skein of uh, Malabrigo, and I am blanking on that color. That, that color is out of my head. Uh, so here it is. This is the blue and the gray. And, um, not blue. Well, all right, so I seriously thought I was buying a navy blue, like blue purple, blue violet. I thought I was buying a blue violet skein. But the more I work on it, Pat's like, that's purple, sweetie. And I'm like, yeah, it kind of is. Um, but the gray is just very muted, very nice, very manly, where he can flip it. And he likes purple, he doesn't mind purple. So um, I got done quite a bit. I made this longer as per my thoughts and his you know thoughts here so this is like the photo i sent my my mom and then she was like "Ooh, being being proud of me showed it off so um basically that that one is this one but this one is like three yarn weights smaller yeah. uh and then i have my charm my monster book of monsters so cute so he's marking my progress. And I knit on this when we won the Super Bowl. So Pat is very happy with it now because it has all those good memories of like winning um, and all the stress that <laughs> that came with the game. So anyway, um, I was born and raised in Philly. So we're Philly fans. Anyway, uh, so yes, yay. This is almost done. I'm in the decreases now, so I'm doing this part it's a four row repeat and i have to read it because i just can't I, like I, it doesn't stick in my head i don't get it i don't know i can't i have to read every single line i can do this part no problem it's this part that just i'm getting i have to get better at i have to get better at so anyway this is patrick's valentine cow and i'm hoping to have it done by then it's a week away it's less than a week it's more than no it's less than a week away it's less than a week away, so I should be fine. If I work on nothing else except for this, I will get this done. So I have to just put this at the top of the pile and get it done because I don't have anything else for him for Valentine's Day. He was going to make me dinner, and I was going to make him this, and then I was thinking I was going to get him a gift card to Banana Republic because he likes that store. And I don't know what he, what he needs or wants, but he can pick something, so that would be fine. Um, from there, my Valentine's gift to myself is the Raspberry Treat socks. Yes, so Raspberry Treat, which I worked on during uh, Vogue Knitting Live, so that has a lot of, <coughs> excuse me, nice memories for me. And they look like this. And I discovered that I did not have the brown that I needed in my stash. And you would think, I have like a million colors over here. Um, you would think that I would be able to find a single brown in there to work. No. So then I tried the pink. All right, so the brown doesn't work. How about the pink? No. All right, the pink doesn't work. How about the tan? No. 
So the tan doesn't work. It's got to be the raspberry. I can definitely find something to match that. No. So after like I had settled on something, I'm like, this would be all right. And then I was like, why are you going to settle for all right? You're putting all this work into it. Like, why are you going to settle for all right? So I go into nitpicks and I look around and I found the perfect brown. I needed like a dark chocolate brown. And this is the Fedora color in uh, the nitpicks stroll, regular little balls. Um, and the charm on here, I added it. It's the uh, charm that came with Valentine's Day at Madame Puttyfoot's Tea Shop that was released in February. And thank you everyone who scooped those up. They were gone within a half an hour. Um, and I was absolutely thrilled. So yeah, this little guy is so cute. And the fedora is just the perfect chocolate brown. If you need it for anything, it's, it's exactly what I needed. I regret nothing. I bought yarn for the shop and I just threw in one skein. 